Hi everyone and welcome to Global AI Student Conference and if you're someone who's joining us for the very first time, this is our third uh, uh, edition of Global AI Student Conference. I'm your co-host Stephen Simon and welcome back everyone once again. It's going to be really exciting next six, seven, eight hours of the event where we're going to learn about the entire ecosystem of the AI and machine learning and not from the experts but actually from the students. Uh, we have students joining us from all across the globe. Uh, they come, uh, they're my student partners. Uh, they are uh, full-time students. So yeah, uh, the next uh, eight hours is going to be really, really exciting. Having said that, uh, the as I said, this is the third edition of the Global AI Student Conference. And the first two were really, really successful where we reached about 2,500 live viewers for the first one. The second one was, was a lot better. We reached 8,000 and let's hope that the third one is bigger and better. <laughs> so uh, please feel free to go ahead and, and share about this event in, on social media. Uh, tag us at the Global AI community and use the hashtags and uh, yeah, uh, share it with your friends and uh, connections. Having said that, the, the conference has been divided broadly into four categories. The first one is the learning sessions where you get to learn about deep learning, about Microsoft Learn Platform. Uh, then uh, you have content around deep dive into machine learning and also uh, some of the great content by uh, Rohan Raj. The other session that the, the category that we have is these talking sessions where we have roundtable discussions. So that's around women data science and uh, there's one by Usman Khan who's going to talk about what it takes to be an NLP engineer. Quite an interesting topic, to be honest. Uh, the, the, the following sessions then are about intro to products where uh, Fothini talks about Azure Custom Vision and introduction to Azure Health Bot. Then we have sessions around the projects, which is always very exciting, where uh, there's, a, there's a project that's around Project Plant AI. And the other one is about uh, no more uh, Matidas. So this four, so you can actually divide the entire conference into these four categories. Having said that, this reminds me that the entire uh, uh, conference has the signed language, which is absolutely great. So I think that that's something to notice that if you uh, if there's someone who cannot uh, 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 attend this conference uh, or hear it, that there are some sign languages to help you out. Having said that, Global AI community is committed to, uh, to empower this entire AI community and they do a lot of events across the globe and help in creating some of the amazing content. So uh, going forward in the month of December, they're going to come up with some absolutely amazing content around uh, AI and machine learning. So to stay updated with that and the other events that they do, please go ahead and join their Slack community and uh, subscribe to their channel that is hash AI for beginners. Uh, there's also a link in the uh, on, on the screen. You can go ahead and check that. And what's really in exciting and interesting about this event is uh, if you go ahead and complete a learn module, right? Th th there's a challenge in, in this event. If you go ahead and complete a learn module, for every module, we plant a tree and together you can actually plant, we can actually plant a forest. How noble is this? This is absolutely great and I have never seen an event like this. This is one of its very own kind. Kudos to the entire team who has been working behind the scenes to organize this absolutely amazing event. This is great. So this time I highly encourage you all that if you go ahead and complete the challenge and all the details you can find on the on the nav bar on the top of the website. So when you go ahead and complete these challenges, they will actually plant a tree for you. This also reminds me that uh, we are streaming this event on, on different uh, platforms. One is definitely on the website that is AIConf.education. That is the official website. It's also being streamed with Microsoft uh, Reactors, YouTube and other partners. So that is absolutely great. And uh, having said that, it's time we go ahead and invite our very first speaker of the day. Uh, she's Anam. Uh, Anam is a Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador and today she's going to talk about learning deep learning. So let's bring her in. Hi Anam, welcome to Global Ice Student Conference October edition. Hello, it's nice to meet you all. I'm really excited for the event. Thanks, thanks, Anam, for accepting the invitation. I really appreciate it. Your session is really, really exciting that it is about how you can actually go ahead and get started with deep learning. I won't take much of your time. Uh, please feel free to go ahead and share your screen and then we can get started. 
Uh, yes, so let me start by sharing my screen. And everyone who's watching, uh, please feel free to go ahead and drop your questions in the comments on all the different platforms that we are, uh, you are watching. And towards the end of the session, we'll answer all your questions. So yeah, you can add your thoughts, views, and uh, that will be great. So I hope you can see my screen. Yes, I can see you're good to go. So hello to all of you. I'm Anam Sayeda Fatima and I'm Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador of Oman. I would like to start by saying that I'm really grateful to this amazing community that connected me with other students around the globe and also it helped me to build high quality skills. So I would highly recommend you to check this Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador community and I can assure you that is going to be very helpful for you. Also, if you would like to connect with me on social media, these are my links on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook. It is at the rate the she order and on LinkedIn also you can connect with me by typing my name. So as you know, today we're going to learn deep learning. So without further delay, let's get started. We humans are amazing at seeing different patterns. Most of us can quickly identify cat, dogs, different handwritings, and some of us can even speak and understand different languages. All these skills are so second nature to us that we don't even think about them. Yet these same skills are very difficult to teach the machine. Imagine if we could create a machine that could identify different images or could translate all the different languages in the world. To do so, we need to create a network that works just like human brain. Think about the human brain. It is made up of billions of neurons, and these neurons connect together to form networks that allows you to learn things easily, and also it helps you to classify different patterns. So to create a machine that is similar to human brain, we have something called as neural network or deep learning. So the neural network takes what you do easily and scales it up to take the advantage of the speed of the modern computer. This means that we can classify thousands of images at, images at an instant, and also we can translate all the different handwritings in the world. So this is how the neural network looks like. We have many layers. All of these layers perform different functions. The input layer receives the input signals and transfers it to the hidden layer. The hidden layer performs all the back end calculations and the output layer transmits the result that is of the hidden layers calculations. Now this looks quite intimidating, so let's break this down into one single unit of neuron which is known as perceptron. So imagine the small circle to be a perceptron, mimicking a neuron in the brain. So perceptron is like a decision function. It takes several binary inputs and produces one binary output, which is either zero or one. Now, these inputs can be given weights. And what do I mean that these inputs can be given weights? It means that with the help of the weights, we know how much impact a particular input is going to have in calculating the output. So we're going to multiply the input with the respective weights, and at the end, we're going to get a weight sum. Next, we have something called as bias. Now, what is bias? Bias helps the model to be less sensitive to one single data point, and also it helps the model to generalize in a much better manner. Now, one example that I can give you is to think about a student that has to be promoted to next grade. So uh, we are going to have the marks as the input, and our output is going to be yes or no. Now, we're going to have a threshold value of 0.5. If the student gets marks or the total result of the student is equal to 0.5 or greater than 0.5, that means that the student is going to be promoted. 
but we're going to keep an exception. We would also like to promote those students who are good at extracurricular activities, but their marks may not be that good. So for this reason, we're going to add a bias. Over here, I have just chosen a bias of three. So what it does is that when we add these inputs and the bias, we're going to get the result which will be equal to 0.5 or greater than 0.5, and we can promote those students who are good at extracurricular activities to the next grade. So this is how bias helps. It makes the model less sensitive and helps it to generalize in much better manner. Now, one thing we should remember is that the output should always be between 0 and 1. So for this, we have an activation function such as sigmoid activation function that fits the end result between 0 and 1. What I had spoken about was one, one single perceptron. But neural network contains more than one perceptron and it is quite complex. So to represent the final neural network, you use something called as matrix notation. So over here, we have three inputs and these lines are our weights. So we have one, we're going to represent our inputs using one is to three matrix and we're going to represent our weights using three is to four matrix. Now we're going to multiply respective inputs with their weights. And then at the end, we're going to represent this whole neural network in form of matrix notation as shown. Now, what are the algorithms that are used in look in deep learning? So the algorithm we have is what a gradient descent, which is an optimization algorithm, which is used to find the local minimum of a function. So how gradient descent work is I have, well, I have an example over here. So this is our graph and this is the equation of a graph. So we need to find the local minimum of this graph. So first we are going to start at an in a random point, which is minus three. So we're going to start over here. And then we're going to find the derivative. Now derivative is basically the gradient. So we're going to find the derivative of this equation. That is the gradient. And we should always remember that we're going to move in the direction negative to the gradient. But how much do we have to move is known by the learning rate which over here we have kept 0.01. It's always better to keep a smaller learning rate than a higher learning rate because a machine that trains much more, is in much more cycles and at the end a model can predict accurately. So we're going to substitute all these values in this equation and in the first iteration after substituting the value we're going to get minus 3.04. So from minus 3, we have moved to minus 3.04. Then in second iteration, we are going to repeat and we're going to substitute the values again, and then we move from minus 3.04 to minus 3.07. We keep on doing or we keep on repeating these iterations till we reach the local minimum, which in this case is minus 5. Now, backpropagation is a very common algorithm in deep learning that uses the concept of gradient descent. So how this works is that we first we can perform the feed forward. So uh, feed forward is the same thing which I had explained before. So we have these layers and we're going to go from input layer till the output layer and we're going to for each node we're going to multiply with the weights. Then we're going to add the bias use the activation function and we're going to get the result which will pass on to the next layer. We keep on doing this till we reach the output layer and at the output layer we're going to calculate the total error which is the error between the predicted value and the accurate value. So we're going to calculate that and after calculating the total error we're going to propagate all the way back to the input layer. Now as we are propagating all the way back at each node, we're going to check how much e at each node. We're going to check how much each node contributes to that error. And subsequently, we're going to update the values of the nodes so as to minimize the error by giving the nodes with higher error rates, lower weight values and vice versa.
Now, what is the framework that is used in deep learning? So one of the framework that is used in deep learning is PyTorch. And PyTorch is an open source Python framework which was developed by Facebook AI research team. And it's very common for, uh, mm -hmm. for it's used for developing neural networks. So the PyTorch. And uh, I like to think of PyTorch as something similar to DubPy's. It's just an extension of NumPy's. But it has more convenient classes for defining neural networks, and also it runs faster since it's using GPU. So this was about PyTorch, and one more thing uh, I would like to say is that PyTorch is based on the philosophy of Python. So it's basically Python first philosophy. So its syntax is similar to Python language, and thus it works along. Uh, it works with other Python packages very well. Now, what are the main ingredients of PyTorch? Tensors are the main data structures of PyTorch that are very similar to arrays and matrices. You can think of uh, tensors as, let me give you one example. So suppose uh, we have a baker, okay? And that baker wants the final um, output or the baker wants to produce a pizza. So the dough will be the input and the output is the pizza. But in between that dough, and but in between, we're reshaping that dough. So in PyTorch, basically, we reshape the tensors so as to fit our final model. So this is how the tensors look like. So we have one dimensional tensor, which is called as vector. Then we have two dimensional tensor, which is called as matrix. And then we have three dimensional tensors. Now, to, at the end, I'm going to teach you how to build your, and learn, build and train your own neural networks. And to do so, we're going to use the Fashionist data set. The Fashionist data set consists of 60,000 training examples and 10,000 test examples. So basically, Fashionist, Fashionist data set basically is very common in AI and machine learning world and it contains the images of clothes, as you can see over here. And to teach you how to build and train your own neural network, we are going to use PyTorch, Microsoft Learn's PyTorch Fundamental course. So let me show you how to do it. So this is the PyTorch fundamental scores. As you can see, it has four modules. The first is module is based on introduction to PyTorch. And over here, it says it contains 10 units, but then you can exclude the um, introduction and summary. So it will be eight units. So I'll just show you how this looks like. So as I explained about tensors, so over here we have a unit which is called what are tensors. So I'm going to click over here. So yeah, this is how the unit looks like. Now, one thing very good about Microsoft Learn is that it has built in sandbox. So the big advantage of this is that you don't have to take the headache of downloading PyTorch or then again downloading Anaconda then Python and all. It has built in sandbox which you can run then and there. So you have you can use in a day 10 sandbox which I guess is more than sufficient. So just you have to just activate the sandbox by clicking over here. And this all is free so you are not even charged. And then, uh, as you can see, we have they have explained what is tensors. And then again, they're going to teach you from the basic, from the starting. So here is import torch, then import numpy. And then you can see they have also uh, given how you can make tensors from directly from the data or from the numpy array. Now, what I recommend you is that Instead of just running the code and reading the code and running the code, they have an option where you can practice your own code. 
So you just click over here and you can just practice over here because it provides hands on learning experience and this will help you to retain your information for much longer time. So you can just type like suppose I'm just typing import. Touch and then you can just run the code. And it will run. Or you can run from here, but as I said, you should always practice. So it's a very good thing. It's, it's a very good, great advantage of Microsoft now. And then uh, I would say that you check this unit out if you want to know more in details about tensors and how to create tensors from different uh, data structures like NumPy and arrays. OK, so this was about tensors and I showed you how Microsoft Learn this uh, looks like. But uh, since we are short in time, I'm going to sh uh, show you the final unit, which is the full building, full model building process. But before that, you can see we have other units. So I would say that before jumping to this unit, you should go to uh, you should go through each unit because they have explained in details the, from the basics. So your understanding will be very good when you reach the final unit. So let me show you the final unit. OK, so I this was before I have to retry activating the sandbox, which you can do it again. So now let me explain. So PyTorch has two data primitives. One is the data set and another is data loader. Now data set basically stores the sample and their corresponding labels, whereas the data loader, it wraps an iterable around the data set so that you can access individual items. So over here, we are going to import the libraries. As you can see, we have import torch. And then we're going to import the neural networks. And then again, we have data loaders and torch vision is basically a computer vision and contains computer vision, you know, packages related to image processing. And then we have to transform. Then, you know, if you want to read about any of this function, you can just place your cursor over here and it will tell what this particular function does. So two tensor, as I said, tensors are the main data structures of PyTorch. So we are using torchvision.transform to transform all matrix or numpy arrays to tensors. Then you have lambda function, compose function, then matplotlib, you know, is used for um, visualizing the data. And also if you want to learn or read more about them, you can just click on this link, which is given over here, and you can read in details about what each particular uh, module does or function does. So now we have preloaded data set. As you can see, we'll be using fashionist data set. So that is preloaded. So we're going to load the data and in that we have the root. Now what is root? Root basically is the path where the data is stored. So since our is preloaded, we, we have just given data. Then train is that in machine learning, you must be knowing that there is trained data set and test data set. That trained data set is used for training the data, whereas test data set is for testing like if a model is predicting the values correctly. So since this is a training data set, so the train will be equals to true. Then, but over here you can see it's test data set. So over there our train is equals to false. And then we are going to download basically means suppose in any case our data is not available in the root or the path, we can download that data from the internet. So we're going to do that true and transform is again. We're going to convert that to to tensor. Now what is batch size over here? We have even batch size equals to 64. Now one example I would give you is that suppose we have 1000 samples now and if we specify batch size equals to 64, it means that in the first training cycle, we're going to train the first 64 samples. Then in the second training cycle, we're going to train the second 64 samples. So that is what is meant by batch size. Then we're going to create our data loaders. As I said, data loaders are basically, it gives an iterable to the data set so that you can access individual items. And this is basically just giving the shape of the tensor or the shape of how the arrays are stored in the memory. So this is n is basically the batch size n. C is the channel for is for the channels. 
H is for the height, W is for the width. So that's where we are going to use X dot shape just to see how it looks like, how, how it is stored in the memory. So this is the output. And as I said, PyTorch or deep learning, usually they run on GPU because GPU makes it run much more faster. So in this code, we are going to check if the GPU is available or not. And as I said, the neural networks basically consist of layers. So over here in the uh, init function, we are going to create the layers. So over here, as you can see, we have flattened module. Now, remember I gave for tensors a uh, pizza example where we had the dough and then we had to reshape it so as to get the final output of PISM. So that's what Flatten does. It basically reshapes the tensor. Now the input in neural network can never, uh, cannot be, you know, two dimensional, three dimensional. It has to always be one dimensional. And since in fashion is data set, we're using images which consist of 28 into 28 pixel resolutions. So we cannot provide that as an input. So we're going to use the Flatten function so that it flattens it into one dimensional array, but the elements, all the elements are still present. It's just that it's in one dimension. And the linear is basically a uh, square creating the layers. So it's, as you can see, create single layer. So as to perform the feed forward, feed forward I had explained from the input layer till the output layer. And another uh, over here is a ray loop. Now the sigmoid activation function was used back in 90s and it was very common in deep learning world. But now in recent times, since sigmoid function was difficult to train because of GPUs, we are now using ReLU, which is rectified linear unit. So ReLU is basically an activation function. We have different types of activation functions. And ReLU basically does is like your the input, if, if it's greater than zero, it's going to give the same input. But it's going to, if it's less than zero, it's going to just print zero. That's ReLU. And in define forward, uh, we are going to perform the feed forward propagation, as I said. So over here, we're going to perform the feed forward. So yeah, there you go. Now in Microsoft Learn, they already have GPU. As you can see, it's built in GPU is there. So that's a very great advantage. So it will train faster and run faster. So as you can see, using CUDA device, and then you have all this input and output and bias. We have provided the bias also. Now, we next we're going to optimize the parameters. So I had, uh, what is cost function? So the cost function is basically the error as between the predicted value and the accurate value. And we have to always, we always want that to be minimum as explained in gradient descent. So this is what the um, cost function is over here. We have cross entropy loss. Then we have learning rate. That is how much from the gradient descent or uh, the, uh, you know, how much we have to move from the gradient descent. So that's where the learning rate is. And if you want to learn more about it, you can just go to these links which are provided. Now, as I said at the output layer, we're going to calculate the total error. So this is where we're going to calculate the total error, and then we're going to perform the back propagation. Now these things are explained in much more details in previous units, so please check that out. Then over here we're just checking the model's performance against the test data set. And this is where our training takes place. Epochs is basically the number of training cycles. So we have kept our training cycles equals to 15. And you can see the loss increases. It's from, from two, the loss increases quite a lot. And we all accuracy also increases. So our final accuracy is 70%. Then we're going to save and load the models. And yeah, this is how the final model will look like. It's now, it can now be used to make predictions. So you can see we have printed the predicted value and the actual value. So as I said, the model, our model had predicted it was an anchor boot, and actually it was an anchor boot. So there you go, our accuracy is correct, our predictions are correct. Now, at the end, I would just like to wrap up by explaining one very small topic, which is the convolution neural network that will be there in the next modules of this learning path. So let me just start.
So basically, convolution neural network is quite different from the neural networks that we had discussed. The convolution neural network does not contain, you know, weights and neurons, but instead it contains layers. It casts basically cast multiple layers on images and uses filtration to analyze the image inputs. Now, one example that I can give of is I can think um, suppose we are we have a model that is for predict uh, that is used for predicting if it's a cat or dog. So in artificial neural network, you have to give the width of the nose and the length of the ears. But in convolution neural network, we do not have to do that. The convolution neural network by itself picks up these features and you do not have to explicitly provide those features. So this makes neural network very useful and it's very ideal when thousands of images need to be extracted. So that's the reason why convolution neural network is used for working with image data, audio data and text data. So the next modules are going to contain those things. So I would need to do that. So we just have over here, introduction to computer vision with PyTorch, natural language processing and audio classification. So yeah, you should just do this. And with each module that you complete, Global AI Student Conference is going to plant a tree. So let's help our mother nature too, and let's help ourselves too by learning all these informations. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for joining. I really enjoyed giving this session, so thank you. That was absolutely great session, Anama. You did cover what is deep learning. You talked about gradient descendant. You talked about back propagation. Uh, you also talked about the frameworks and an absolutely amazing great, um, Microsoft Learn modules that we have that people can use to go ahead and get started. Uh, I think uh, it's time. We'll continue the discussion of uh, this AI and deep learning in, in the following panels that we have that will be taken by uh, Dimitri. So everyone who's watching, please continue your questions coming in as we'll take them after this panel. And Dimitri, from here, it's all you now. Uh, thank you so much, Simon. Uh, so.